Hello and welcome to Live Lunch with Pastor. This is Associate Pastor Tony Gandula of my father's house. Thank you for joining us today on, what is today anyway? It is the 19th of January. I'm going to say hello to people as they sign on and say hello. I get to greet you back. Once again, um, you can check us out on, hey Jerome, I can tell by your jersey. Once again, you can check us out at mfhlv.com. Hello, Chris and Joanna and Jerome are watching. All right. So check us out um, for a, a host and a feast of live lunches. Hi, Regina and Roma. A host of them. Also on YouTube, we're available. If you want to give to the work of God, mfhlv.com. And it takes you to, that's our shop now on Facebook, takes you to the donate now. All right. That being said and done. It's an awesome day to be alive with Jesus. And we're going to jump right into this. It's called For the Love of God. But it's for the love of God. So as we jump in here, I want you to know the verses are going to be basically here in the chapter known as the love chapter. And I'm talking about Corinthians. Um, a lot of people call John the beloved. He wrote a lot about the glory of God and the love of God. Because he was really close to Jesus. He was so close to Jesus, he missed a lot of bad stuff just by being close to Jesus. So there's a real key there and a power in love. While other people are busy betraying Jesus, and Jesus looks around at a room of disciples and says, One of you shall betray me? Who was the one guy <laughs> that Peter was sure he knew it wasn't himself? Who was the one guy he knew? would not be betraying Jesus and would know how he was close enough to Jesus that he could ask him in, in a nod or a look that, John, show me who he's talking about. Ask him. And where was John? His head, the Bible says, was on Jesus's chest. That's how close he was to Jesus. That's the beloved, John the beloved. So, we're going to read about the love of God here and for the love of God. John 13, verse 1. This is only 15 minutes, so I'm going to make sure we try to get it all in, okay? For the love of God. John 13, 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should, now get this, Depart out of the world unto the Father. Most of us only hear, and because that's all we ever hear, it's like all we know is depart out of the world. One day you'll die. One day this life will be over. But that's, now how, that's not how it's written, and that's not what Jesus' focus was. Depart out of the world unto the Father. You know, just today I read a text on Facebook of a good man of God that... Um, passed away. His son hit the post up there and he said, he's celebrating because it's my loss, but it's heaven's gain. And look at the attitude here. He was, Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. The only way via this body or life is going through this to the Father. Having loved his own they were his own, and he loved them until the end. Now, that's an awesome thing to know, that Jesus will love you until the end. No matter what the end is, for you or for me, Jesus will love us until, until the end. And it says here, having loved his own, that's ownership. They were his. Now, there's lots of things he would say about, I have lost none of the ones you gave me. They've kept your word. They've kept what I've said to them. They've kept me in their hearts, having loved his own. There was an ownership between them and between God, between as brothers, as Savior and Lord, there was an ownership. He loved them unto the end. John 13, still in the same chapter, and he has just finished doing after, he's, after the, the first verse says, this is the uh, precursor of what's about to de be demonstrated by Jesus, he did the famous washing of their feet. And if everybody doesn't know that, I'll make it really short and simple. 
a slave, a low servant was the one that washed your feet back in those days when you came in and out of a place because everything was not on paved roads and your feet were dirty walking into somebody's home and the lowest servant there would wash your feet. Jesus took aside his garments of his lordship and he girded himself with a towel and he washed their feet with that same towel, put his garments back on. There was a conversation between Peter and him saying, you're not gonna wash my feet. And Jesus had a conversation basically encouraging him that if he didn't, he wasn't gonna have the relationship he, he wanted to have with Jesus. So after he's done that, he says in John 13, 13, you call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. He did not deny he was their Lord and master, and he is the Lord. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. So the love of God is shown in humbling himself before those he's serving. He said, I didn't come among you as one to be served, but to serve. And he's showing his love for them. And he's saying, this is how you ought to treat each other. This is how I want men to see you, women, children to see you, as how you treat each other washing one another's, other's feet as the lowest servant. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you. I love it when he says, truly, truly. In other words, this is a fact. This is the way it is twice. <laughs> Pay attention. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Never going to be as big as Jesus. Neither is he sent greater than he that sent him. Our pastor, Pastor Jose, has talked on this quite a bit, that there is no fast tracking with God or like a fast meal, a fast food with the Lord. You have to go through the process, just like Jesus went through a process. Um, if Jesus had to deal with it, then we're not greater than Jesus. We're going to have to learn also like he, like he learned. The Bible says that... Um, through the things he suffered, he learned. Jesus, through the things that he suffered. If you know these things, happy are you. I don't know about you. Me, I want to be happy. As I go through this life, I want to enjoy it. Um, I'm married, and there's a key awesome verse I love that the Lord showed me one time by humbling me, that I'm not gonna enjoy this life as a married man to my wife unless I enjoy it together with her. Because he doesn't look at me by myself. He looks at me together with her. He doesn't see me as me. He sees me as us. Two that become one. But going back to this, I want to be happy. And Jesus says there, happy are you if you do them. You're going to enjoy and you're going to be happy in this life. John 13, still in the same chapter. These are the last two verses, verses 34 and 35. Um, it's unique because we are actually doing these scriptures as our scriptures for the uh, month with our youth group, Rise Up Youth Ministries. And they have a little slogan. It comes actually out of a uh, booklet prepared by Pastors Jose and Tony called Who I Am in Christ. So before each of these scriptures that you would read uh, throughout the day, there's a precursor that starts off like this. I am. And then it says who I am as appropriated by these scriptures. I am, and this one says, I am his disciple because I have love for others. I am not just his disciple, but I prove that I am his disciples because I have love for others. And where does that love come from and whose love is it? It's the love of God. The Bible says that he teaches us, which is, I'm so glad, <laughs> he teaches us to love each other as brothers and sisters. He teaches that to us, because you're in the family, and dad is dad, and he wants his family to show love to one another. Going back to the word here, John 13, verse 34, a new commandment, he's speaking to his disciples, 
I give unto you. That you love one another, or you agape one another, as I have loved you. Love the way I love. Love the way and example I've set for you to love. It's a high standard, but he gives us his love. He gives us his own love and the ability to do that. I know that sounds easy to say, but it's a major operation from God. At least it was for me. For some people, my gosh, I know people that have given testimonies of being crazy. I mean, certifiably crazy. But God came in and did a work inside of them. And not only were they healed, but they could minister and love other people. He just did a bypass in them. So when we say that we're able to love because of the love of God, it's a salvation or coming to know Jesus or being rescued from your old self to, to come to Christ is a miracle. It is nothing less, nothing short than a miracle. It's not just a prayer. It is an actual miracle that a person has to grab a hold of, hold on to until you're assured. And that's another subject. But um, I'm, I'm saying all that because I doubt it. But I held on to that relationship as I wanted it so bad till I knew, hey, I'm different. I'm, I love Jesus. I, and anyway, long story short, <laughs> it's a miracle. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Now there's lots of disciples out in the world. There's lots of disciplines if I can put it like that, maybe that's an easier way of getting it across. There's a lot of things that are out there to disciple people. Culture disciples people. But by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, Jesus said, if you have love one to another. What kind of love? The love of agape, the love that would serve one another and rejoice and rejoice and be happy doing so. In fact, find your happiness in doing that. Praise God. All right. I'm going to say a quick thing about this because our time is running short. The way this was brought across to me very practically by our beloved Pastor Jose was <clears throat> in our marriage, my wife, my wife and I, as we've been married 32 years, we had some rough spots. And I remember he said something to us. It was awesome. He said, when you're in a conflict with that person, you need to ask yourself, what is the best thing for this person right now? Whatever, you're in a conflict, you're confronting one another, and maybe not in love at the moment, you're in a conflict, you need to ask, what is the best thing for this person? Not, how, not what's gonna make me feel good, not what's gonna make me feel righted, but what is the best thing for this person? And then the other challenge he gave us was this, Which of you will be the first to repent to the other? It takes two to tango, right? It takes two to get in an argument. Which of you will be the first to repent? That was two challenges he gave us as we've walked through and grown to love each other more and more in our marriage. Um, it's hard for me not to relate to you personal stuff, but that's the relationship of Christ. It's not just, it's not a teaching, it's not a doctrine. It's a discipleship of love where you allow God to shape your will. That's what a disciple does. They allow their will to be shaped. And that's how Jesus taught the actual shaping of his disciples' will. Okay, I don't want to go over time. God bless you. I'll probably see you uh, tomorrow. Um, have an awesome day. Jesus is Lord. We lift up our country. He's coming back. And we have resurrection power in him. And anything can be changed and reborn and turned around again by his resurrection power and his glory. A kiss to the king. Have an awesome day.